<clears throat> okay. Oops. Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Uh, Mary from Country Sheet Paint here. Just going to give some people some time to tune in, sign on, and get these comments going. Um, there we go. Okay. So uh, you may recognize this nightstand. I have already painted it um, in the last video last week, uh, but doing it again, going to do it a little differently. Still going to do a distress look, I think, um, using the wet distress method and a damp cloth. Just going to find that cloth here. Got one of these. Oh, sorry, just one minute. Got to make sure the comments are working. Um, if you are tuned in, let me know where you're coming from. Uh, comment. Uh, we do have a giveaway as well, so I'll go into that. I'm sure everyone's a little excited. Come on, computer. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so I've let this dry just for a little bit. This is a nice kind of custom color that I've made uh, based on a color we used to carry called Conquer. It was just a limited edition, only around for six months or so, I think from uh, 2018. Really nice color. Um, I, my mom really loves it. These are her nightstands, her call. Um, we had a painted them dark roast last week, you may have seen, in a cool farmhouse style. Some like to do the reverse with dark underneath and white on top. Um, she, we brought them home. They just weren't really a part of her decor. So uh, I took a look at this cool vintage jewelry box that she used to have. And it's got these nice chartreuse green colors and a, a yellow and a darker green to it. And I asked her, why can't we do something like that? Uh, and she was okay with it. <laughs> so I have pre-painted this one in Soiree, which is kind of like Pop the Bubbly, but a lighter beige color, uh, really nice and creamy, nice and warm. And this one also was Soiree, but then I painted over it because we're going to reveal that color in a few minutes. Okay, got it going. And then I was hoping that I could do the inside of the drawers in Peachy Keen. Um, I did a Art Deco magazine rack for her already in Peachy Keen with some antiquing wax and she liked it. So probably gonna do that. Uh, I think maybe tomorrow if I have time, I'm gonna antique the whole thing, uh, add some more on top because more is always better sometimes. And I will also show you how I made that color. I've got it uh, pre-mixed right here just to finish. I just wanna get started on this other one because it does take about 20 minutes before we can start wet distressing. So that's this guy right here in Soiree. And I'm just gonna ungracefully pop the colors out. Oops. There we go. They get a little sticky. So I am going to wax it so this is a lot easier to open and close. This has had um, about overnight to dry. It's nice and dry and can't scratch it off. There's no adhesion issues. I really want this layer to be on really, really well because when we go to apply a wet coating and only let it sit for about 20 minutes, when you go to wipe that off uh, to reveal that nice white color underneath, you want that white to stay and not reveal the wood or maybe the primer you used. Uh, these are uh, kind of cheap faux wood, some sort of melamine. Uh, really nice style, looks a lot better painted. Um, it had a really sickly yellow color to it with hodgepodge distressing. It was some kind of home sense purchase from 2007. So we're gonna dress them up. <laughs> Wax the drawers. Yeah, um, if you have anything with grooves on the inside, any placements there, you can run a candlestick or a beeswax bar or just a bit of natural wax right over that. It makes it a lot easier. Um, any kind of factory made piece, sometimes they don't have the nice rolly uh, setup. So the wax is really nice for drawers. All right, so we got folks from Quebec, uh, Alberta, Manitoba. Thank you for tuning in. Lots of Canadians. Hello from the West Coast. Um, okay, so just need to find a space here. I got a lot of stuff on the desk today. I'm gonna show you how I mixed up that color. Um, I did a little dry swatch of what I used to have of Conquer. I had just like the tiniest dry amount. I didn't have enough at all to cover this. So I used what I could to replicate it. And the colors I used, if you're curious, um, these two colors, licorice, which is our black, and fresh mustard, which is a zesty mustard yellow. Um, we recommend this on our color mixing guide. Uh, just, I think, a half and half ratio makes a really nice golf green, kind of a moss green. 
but if you add a little bit of driftwood, um, this is just in a FIFO bottle, um, it's a nice dark taupe, kind of like a sand color, add a touch of that and you get something a lot like our 2018 fall color. I still have the, the little color card we used to have. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, it's handy to have one of these things um, or just a tiny artist brush. I'm going to bring the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Nice. Yeah, the wax trick I didn't even know until I started, you know, using furniture paints and then it just it popped up on some kind of Pinterest board and I was like, oh my goodness, I need that in my life. So I use it a lot. All right, so I think, what did I say my ratio was? Uh, I wrote it on a post-it note here. One part driftwood, two parts licorice, and three to four parts fresh mustard. Um, I don't do teaspoons or cups, sorry, no, no sharp ratios there. But we are going to start out with what we need first to make that green, which is a yellow and a black. I played around with our other colors like Luminous and Bee's Knees, and I found that they were just a bit too uh, pastel and kind of on the whiter side. You need something with a bit of punch to it, like fresh mustard. So, whew, just misplaced that. Look at all the stuff on here. How do I keep track? Okay. So, got my cloth ready. We're going to start with lots of fresh mustard. I know I'm going to need tons of that. And we're going to need a good amount of licorice. So just eyeballing those two parts there. That might be too much, and there's a clump. It's old licorice here. Haven't quite mixed it well enough. So licorice is gonna tone down that, uh, or sh it's, it's gonna darken the shade of the yellow, make it not so vibrant. And this is not uh, our recipe. This is just part of the color wheel. This is just what happens when you mix two colors together. Kind of like the red and blue makes purple. So this is kind of similar. You can see that it's just not as muted. Still have that, it's a nice color on its own. Um, I really love this. It's kind of like a 70s green, a lot like the jewelry box that we were going for. But sometimes uh, it just looks a little more grown up or antiqued if you add a little bit of something to mute it down. So that's where driftwood's gonna come in. Uh, latched on tight there. One sec here. Silicon spatulas. Oh, that's a really good idea. It's probably not ideal to do this on cardboard. It's going to absorb a lot, but I have a lot of it kicking around, so I'm going to do that. Bit of a waste of paint here. Um, sorry for anybody who's bothered by that. I am a little bit, but it's for the demonstration. Do it for the live. <laughs> so I'm just going to take a touch of driftwood because I don't want to go overboard. It's just one part. Um, this might not be enough here, but th that's what you start out with, and then you kind of just build it up till you get it the way you like it. So this is just going to mute it a little bit. I definitely need some more driftwood there. So ever so slightly, not so zesty, but definitely need some more driftwood. Let me get that ready here. And it does help to see that this is a dry swatch that is a wet swatch, so that could get a little, might be a little different when it's dry. So if you want to see what our other ratios look like, other suggestions, maybe you're looking for a nice uh, plummy purple or some kind of uh, nice yellow, maybe a butter yellow or something like curry, definitely check out the color recipes guide. We even have a color mixing tutorial. Um, Roseanne did a fantastic job uh, with her fingers just blending it all in, explaining t uh, tones, tints, uh, shades, all that. Kind of just a 101 into how to mix colors. Very, very helpful. We have a lot of colors. We have, I think, about 50, but sometimes it's just not the one you're looking for. Um, I think I needed to add a bit more, but yeah, you get the, the gist here. So that is just a little bit, kind of a nice muted green with driftwood, licorice, um, and fresh mustard. You could do luminous. I found that was pretty close. Uh, that's it's it's a little paler, so you could do that. Um, I plan on using antiquing wax to darken all of this up, anyways. So not too worried. Just gonna set this off to the side. Make sure that doesn't come back up. So yeah, um, the silicone spatula was a good idea, or something like this. Uh, they usually come in sets. These came at the dollar store. Never know what you find there. I think they're really improving on their craft supplies. 
Um, just gonna close these all up. You wanna keep your paints clean and free from spilling. All right, so I do wanna get a head start on painting over this one real quickly. So that's the mix that I kind of did up last night. Gonna just keep this in case I still have some of it left because it took quite a bit of work to get that poured in there. Um, oh, <laughs> thank you, Chris. Love watching your live tutorials. Happy to help. Oops, don't get that in there. Just gonna move this back so you guys can see the nightstand again. Oops, sorry for the random shaking there. One more time. Okay, so that's what we've got to work with. Got my one and a half oval brush and I'm just gonna go over, uh, I think two thin coats did it for that nightstand. Um, don't wanna go too thick. And we're just really quickly gonna pass over this. Um, I'm not too worried about getting any texture from these brush marks here. Gonna start on the side so you can't see quite yet. Um, I think this might be a, a little lighter than Conquer, but it is wet, so hmm, I don't know, it's pretty close. There's a couple other colors that are very popular. I think folks really like to use um, Aurora a lot, which is a lot like um, Jitterbug, which is more of a muted teal. I'd be happy to show you how to make that someday. I have a little secretary desk that I think I want in a darker teal with some wax on it. Not sure yet. So that's since spin it around. That's the nice green mix we've got going on. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, green used to be really popular like 10 or 15 years ago. I think it's coming back. <laughs> I don't know if colors really go away. Let me know if you would have something like this in your house. Um, that could be your comment as well, just bringing up the giveaway. Maybe that's what you're waiting for. We are doing a $50 giveaway on our website. Um, all you have to do after the video is uploaded is just comment to win. For the next 24 hours, uh, starting from today, we will have it uh, live. You're free to comment below and let us know what you think of the green, the project, uh, anything like that. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. And uh, we will pick a winner and they will get $50 to shop on our website. Very, very handy. You can get quite a bit. So just uh, still comment, I love to engage and talk now, but after the video, let me know what you think as well. So kind of doing some cross hatching, making sure I don't overwork the product. I've got the heat up in the house so it dries a little faster for me. If you're working in a cold shed, um, account for dry times. With uh, distressing, um, especially just two colors, you really don't want to work up the under layer and you want to make sure that this doesn't tack up on you either. So for a nice, clean, uh, natural, distressed look, adhere to your dry times. <laughs> um, 20 minutes is good for the wet distress method. If you're sanding uh, with a sandy block or something, you can probably just wait a little longer. Um, paint does dry pretty quick. We only say an hour or so in between coats. So I've got, uh, I have this little cloth that I'm going to use to wet distress and reveal some of the soiree. Um, but if you find that maybe you forgot and it's been a bit too long and the paint has dried more than you wanted, you can always use a scrubby pad, um, like one of those green ones or a sponge, something lightly abrasive that isn't going to break off into the finish. Definitely use one of those. And I almost prefer that because sometimes it can give you that almost chippy finish. Uh, just for that top layer of paint, something to experiment with. Not a red or a green fan. Oh, thank you. But but you liked this. Good, good. Um, I don't have a lot of red decor in my house, but I really, really love painting with our reds and adding a bit of black or black wax um, or graphite glaze that we offer. It, it adds a bit of depth and dimension. Um, I find sometimes colors can look a little flat without just a specialty product or some distressing. So definitely. I think I would be more into having this kind of green in my house with all the, I have a lot of teal, I have a lot of jitterbug and black. Um, so that's kind of my decor, but I could fit this in. I could see me doing it. And I, I was thinking about adding a stencil. I got something from uh, Michael's the other day, a fancy Martha Stewart one. Um, it's a cute little bird one. I'm thinking about putting it just on the front of the drawers and I 
um, kind of for that like fancy European look. So uh, maybe with some bronze shimmery metallic cream if we have time, or that can be part two for tomorrow. Let me know if you think a stencil could go on here anywhere. Gotta move a little quicker. A lot of legs. <laughs> I've painted this twice already, um, so I'm not terribly enthusiastic about painting the legs again and again, but um, she's really happy with this color, my mom, so I think this will look really good in the, the I guess, drawing room. <clears throat> And it's going to be right near that uh, Peachy Keen Art Deco thing, which was painted in this, the magazine rack. If you want to see how I did that, I think that was one of the first videos uh, that we started live. So be sure to check that out in our past uh, line up there. Normally I have uh, my pieces propped up on paint cans or something, but this thing is a little top heavy, so I kind of have to have a grip on it. I've already almost knocked it over. I don't know how many times it can survive a beating off the table, so you've got to be a little careful. Make sure you're working in a comfortable space <laughs> if you're working from home, like me. Make sure you get up in the crevices. Um, oops, hit myself there. When you go to distress, you probably want to leave the darker color behind more than the light color. But on the edges, I really want that soiree to pop. So I'm just going to make sure, very thorough, right in there. <laughs> Trying not to touch the dried stuff. And um, I am going really quickly. So if you notice that you're doing the same thing or it's really warm and the paint is thickening up on you and you're getting lots of ridges um, with lots of paint kind of collecting on the sides maybe, Take a fine grit paper, like 220 sand paper, uh, it's just over there, sorry, and just rub it really gently along the legs. Uh, that takes those little ridges of paint that I've collected right off. Um, if you go too far, I might end up seeing the other color, but uh, it, it's a nicer finish in the end. Do that before you wax or finish up with another product. Just clean up the finish, otherwise it can just look like a heavily painted piece, and uh, not everybody likes that, so just to consider. Um, I guess it would be really easy to have that happen here, so if you paint like that, it kind of just collects up there, don't let it dry. Just really quick pass, smooth it out, if there's any extra texture, <laughs> extra texture, just go ahead and uh, sand that with the 220 grit. And I did have some kind of collect up here, I already uh, sanded it a little bit after I painted it for a And it does make the paint feel a little smoother too if you're just using uh, a fine grit over flat surfaces like the top. Right now it feels very chalky, very matte, but uh, 220 grit will really make that very soft. Kind of like you waxed it, but you didn't. So um, if you don't want to wax and you want that smooth look, um, sometimes you don't need an extra product, just some sandpaper. Um, folks have even used a, a rough coarse paper bag. So if you have any of that or the packing paper, you can try that. <laughs> It is DIY after all, there's a lot of things you can come up with. Has anybody ever done a custom mixing kind of recipe? Uh, maybe you've pulled from our own website, uh, combining any of the other colors that we suggested. Um, let me know in the comments. Always curious if anyone's using those. Um, I do it often. I really like Peacoat and Bliss together, mixed uh, like in a half and half. It's just a gorgeous color. Very easy to do. If you're doing a large project, I'd say go with two pints, then you'd be making, you know, one bigger one. But just work that out based on your project. A lot of good combinations, so let me know. Oh, love the muted green. Avocado, I guess that's avocado. I was looking for a word that would kind of describe that. I love, love that kind of color. Yes, uh, appliances and everything. Um, I knew somebody that used to have them all, but I bet those are pretty hard to find now. They're extremely pop popular, I bet. Does KitchenAid have a nice olive green set? I know the red one's popular. <laughs> There's a lot of red and green folks out there, actually. Notice that. It's not just teals that are popular. Everything else. <laughs> so I'm just going to catch the back of the legs. And then I think that one has had enough time to kind of just sit and dry a little bit without tacking up on me. 
so I can wet distress that. Um, I'm not going to distress it as heavily as I did with Dark Roast and the other color last week. Just going to make the, kind of frame it in, make the little drawers pop, but nothing too crazy because I do want to add that stencil. And if you distress heavily and then have a stencil, it might be too busy depending on what you're working on. So. So yeah, this one will need two coats. Um, even though I'm wet distressing, uh, these two coats painted really close together within uh, the same hour, they'll probably do just fine. Um, I wouldn't want to distress now when it looks a bit streaky. Could do with just a second coat. Even right now, not waiting too long. Kind of just like to go over it one more time. And then I can't forget the top. <laughs> And these are just um, kind of dainty, petite nightstands. So I'm just going to finish them up with wax. Um, if you have anything that's a little higher traffic, maybe well-used nightstands, um, or you uh, have some kids that are kind of rough on furniture, maybe use our clear coat. Um, dries to a satin finish. It's a bit more durable. You can drop your keys on it. Um, if you have somebody who likes to collect all the change on their bedside table, clear coat, that nightstand. <laughs> um, but after wax is cured, it's, it's pretty durable on its own too, but for low traffic. Almost need a stool here, but it's working. I try not to go in one direction just for this kind of style or in a swirl, because um, when you do distress back, it kind of reveals those brush marks in the same way that you applied them. So, nice random patch marks kind of work too. Okay, I'm going to catch these legs later because I want to move on to that one. Just going to carefully move this way. Okay, so we're going to lightly distress this guy with the wet distress method. I prefer using just a damp cloth or a sponge because it, um, it's just not as messy as sandpaper. I work inside. Um, I don't really go outside unless I'm actually using the orbital for prepping and stuff like that. So I've got my, my damp cloth and water. This is just a reusable dish cloth from the hardware store. You can pick them up anywhere. Try not to get something that's lint free. Um, try to get something that's lint free, sorry, as you don't want to work any fibers into your finish. Um, just damp enough. That it's not dripping. You don't want to saturate the paint as you're trying to work it up or you'll find just one pass kind of opens a lot more paint than you wanted. So I'm going to start really really carefully, light pressure just on the edges here, testing it out. Um, I had tried to paint it whoop de doo which is a really nice uh, bright turquoise uh, kind of teal color. Um, so you might see that pop through here. When, because uh, I didn't quite let everything dry. If that peeks through under soiree, I'm just going to dry brush soiree over top of that. Um, if you're trying to change colors a lot and you can accidentally see, um, yeah, it's already happening. It'll probably happen some more. But if it's starting to peek through, just touch it up with some paint or wait longer for it to dry. Um, some folks even suggest uh, painting their base color sealing it with a clear coat so it's nice and strong and can't be wiped off. You could do that if you'd like. Um, I've never really tried that, but sometimes if you are having trouble of the other color peeking through, you either need more coats of paint of that, of that color or maybe seal it, give it some kind of barrier. I just want to give it a little bit of wear because I do plan on putting that stencil, I think, over these nice drawer fronts. So I just want to frame them because when I set the drawers back in, this is going to be outlined nicely. There's a nice groove here that could be highlighted and whoop de doo is kind of peeking through so that's no trouble. I'll just touch that up in a bit. Wait for everything to dry before you do your touch-ups. Just a good practice. And I'm just using my fingertip, just a little bit of pressure. Oops, not too much. And I don't know if this is damp enough. There we go. Sometimes swirls works it up better, 
Um, I'm barely applying any pressure. I want just the lightest amount of distressing happening. And just start slow. Work in one section, take a step back, see how you like it. Um, the wet distress method offers a bit more control, I find. Sometimes if you're sanding, it's way too easy to just sand past two layers instead of one. So, and if you don't want to scratch up, uh, let's say you're not doing two colors and you just want to reveal that wood, um, you don't want to scuff up the wood maybe. So just wet distressing will take that off nicely without scratching up anything else. And just gonna work at the edges here, anywhere that natural wear and tear would have occurred. Um, if you find you're getting polka dots, then you need to change up your your um, roughing up uh, directions. Maybe don't go in a circle, go up and down, or make an X instead. Um, I try to change it up or do kind of just as if it's accidentally nicking it every time. Just create that, that weathered look without getting what I um, call the spotted cow effect, where it's just random patches that don't make any sense. But if you are going for a very, very distressed farmhouse finish, that does happen. So um, you definitely could do that. Um, but right now I kind of just want a control, very light distressing, and wet distress with a damp cloth really lets that happen. Just want to sort of reveal somewhere but not too much when I go to antiquing wax uh, later it's going to stain this color as well and kind of deepen it up for me and just a little bit of wear and tear over here not too much the brush marks from my other coats are adding to the texture and making a nice roughed up look instead of you know perfect brush marks falling away. Not too much here. I think I'm going to stop on that side. Definitely when you have to like just back up, take a look before you keep going. Um, I do a lot of dry brushing as well as wet distressing sometimes on a piece. So when I do finish all my distressing, right before I go to uh, wax or something, I'll use a textured brush like this and soiree and I'll just really lightly kind of go over areas if I found that I didn't distress enough um, or that whoop de doo like a previous color popped through. This and this, just a little bit of dry brushing, just a little bit of paint on the edges. Sometimes it helps to tap it onto a cloth before you brush. Um, that does wonders as well. So if you find you haven't distressed enough and it's too late or you need to add some more green because you distress too much, same method works blends it in without being too obvious that you just touched up. So might be might work for your project when you come along to doing it. Whoop de doo is definitely showing through there, that bright teal. I think we're gonna put it in the garden instead. Um, it's a it's a very nice summery color. It's also the color of the month if you're interested. A uh, really nice blue. Perfect for summer. I would really love to see like Adirondack chairs or something really nice uh, for your porch. That would nice pop of color. That's this blue that's peeking through here. So I'm just trying to outline this really nice groove. Each leg has one. And they don't have to look the same. I'm not even checking to see if one has been over distressed or not because it doesn't matter. Um, not really. So just gonna scuff this up a bit so I'm not intentionally intentionally distressing the center just the edges I'm going really lightly over it when I am because maybe I want to bring up just a little bit but not too much um, it's your call so it's it's just kind of whatever you're you're looking for and again if you do too much just touch it up with some more paint so just bringing it up it's gonna mostly distress I think at the top because that's where someone would be using this um, often and it would be showing that kind of wear. 
So I, I definitely made sure I had lots of paint on the top because I will be doing quite a bit of distressing there. And that is, don't know, can everybody kind of see that? It's a very subtle effect. Um, when I did dark roast and pop the bubbly, it might have been too much of a contrast, giving it that burnt fire look. Maybe not every color combined works. Um, <laughs> she was nice about it, my mom, when, she, when I showed it to her, but she did say she'd like to try something else. So we're gonna do Conquer. Well, the Conquer lookalike, so. Glad I figured out that mix. And if you're ever curious or you want to make your own recipes, I'd love to see what people come up with. Check out the color mixing tutorial on our website. Um, I think even uh, on our YouTube channel we have the same video going on. Um, it explains how to mix it, how to, if you just need a lighter color, add some white, add some black or dark brown if you're trying to deepen um, a tone of some sort, make it a darker shade. So I have a lot of fun. There was a bit of trial and error. I tried to use a couple different colors. Like I said, I tried all the yellows. I found fresh mustard worked the best for this. That zesty yellow you really need for this kind of avocado green. So really, really love it. I would love to see this in a kitchen. Um, I think it's, I think we should go back to that a little bit. <laughs> I loved the orange shag rug look. It was great. <laughs> So I'm just going to make sure I distress along here. When I put the drawers in, you're going to see a little white framing in here, or this light beige color. So I block in the view here. Um, more might be distressed in the center, just from, you know, years of cleaning, kind of giving it that worn look. But it would definitely be worn on the edges, almost always, years of pulling the drawers. So make sure you kind of add that back to the piece and distress all the way down. I will distress, I think, later, all the way down there. No need to, right now. Use a scrubby pad if I have to. Um, it should be just a bit more distressed at the base. It's actually not bad with the bright teal peeking through. It's kind of interesting, but I think because I am putting a little bit of pink in the drawers, I will be Touching that up. Just the edges there. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna do just a little bit of the dry brushing just to show you how to touch up. I've got my little chip kind of messy bristle brush. It's not neat, it will create that texture for me. Um, barely putting any on the tip of the brush. I'm just gonna tap some excess out here and be sure not to use that side when I go to wet distress again. Um, just going to lightly brush up the edges. If you don't want to distress, you could also do just the dry brushing method as well. You don't have to do both. Um, but when I am touching up my mistakes here, and then you just kind of let it sit, dry brush again. If you found it's too much of a contrast, Go over again with your uh, grease. So that's how I would fix the little touch up there. Let's distress the uh, drawers here just for a moment. See if we have to the stencil. Yeah, okay. I think I'm gonna try and do that stencil and belt buckle on the drawer fronts here for you. Just have to distress them a little bit here. Oops, that's a bit too much. Um, maybe no. I think I will have to save that. Sorry. Um, I was going to do my stencil over the front here, I'll show you. But it's not quite ready. I do want to do one more coat and then distress the front. And I just got a bit of, oops, just got a bit of white paint on there. If you're quick enough, you can wipe it off. <laughs> Easy cleanup, always. Oops. So this has two coats, this has one coat. Um, I think I do want to go in one more time with paint, let it dry for a bit, and then I was planning on doing something like this. And I've got these nice poles, uh, little knobs here, that I think would be really cute. I already did them in belt buckle. I plan on doing a uh, belt buckle over the front here. 
So unfortunately, I don't have time to do the stencil today. Sorry guys, but I will tomorrow. So just gonna get centered here again, apologies. Um, sorry for the lead up here. I won't be doing the stencil today. I'll be doing it tomorrow. I hope to see you there 11 o'clock again tomorrow. Gonna be doing this over the front and then I will be antiquing it with our antiquing wax. Um, this was just kind of wanted to show you the distress and the color mix on how to make conquer. Um, I hope you, get, you liked it. Um, if you are curious about some of our past colors and you want to know if there is a possible recreation thing possible, um, or you just want to know how to mix up a unique color, check out the color recipes guide or just uh, leave a comment. Let me know what color you're looking for. Um, and just one more time about that giveaway, it is $50 off of our online website. All you have to do is comment to win in the, the video below here uh, after we've uploaded it. Have it up for about 24 hours for commenting and then we'll pick our winner. Uh, so that's all I can say for today. Uh, thank you for tuning in and commenting. Let me know how you like the color here. It was a lot of fun. I do have uh, quite a bit left so I think I'm going to try and find something else to paint while I still have it. Um, if you have Tupperware, a good way to store your fancy custom mixes. Um, and then I guess I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow. Uh, stay tuned for that. Antiquing wax and a metallic stencil. And I'm going to have this all distressed up nicely for you. Um, the wet distress method here worked out pretty well, but I think I just want to touch up the, the areas where the teal peeked through. So I'm going to leave it at that, and I hope you guys have a really good day. Happy painting!